Hello everyone, Mike Levin here on Friday, April 10th, 2015, and I thought I'd run through the Pipulate demo one more time. The deck has been evolved quite a bit, and I think I can present it a lot smoother than I have before, so here we go. Pipulate. Collect data into spreadsheets magically. The situation is you're walking along and suddenly you're instructed or you decide you need to start capturing data off the internet, maybe scraping some small piece of information that appears somewhere before it changes the next day. And speaking of the next day, you have to do this every day to capture enough to do trending. And uh, we're still, you don't want to spend a lot of money to do it. You got a few options. Compulsively check the web and copy and paste into maybe a spreadsheet. Use expensive monitoring services, which do exist, but they almost all charge eventually. Or you can tape together some crazy solution. But that presents a chicken and egg problem. You can't afford the expensive services until you're successful enough to pay for them. And you don't think you're technical enough to spin a solution yourself. But that's all in your head because what if spreadsheets could fill themselves in? Simply by naming what you want to grab off of the internet and giving it some input like the URL, like tell me how many shared times this URL was shared. Well, you can do that. It's called Pipulate. Just go to pipulate.com, drag that bookmarklet to your bookmark bar. Go to a Google spreadsheet and click the bookmarklet again. It'll prompt you to log in to Google through OAuth. Your username and password is not saved anywhere. And then you can start pipulating. You simply hit that pipulate button and bam, the question marks get replaced with the output of the function. Basically, it works like this. Any column can contain the input parameters to a function. Functions are the column titles of all the following columns. When pipulate processes a row, it takes the parameter, feeds it into the function, executes it on a server that might be some that is physically somewhere else. It might be a Raspberry Pi in your house, it might be a cloud server, it doesn't matter. In any case, it returns the value, plugs it into the spreadsheet. That's it. And uh, data simply gets pulled from the web, processing left to right, top to bottom, a lot like a lawnmower, and uh, records the values. And your life got a little bit better. It got rid of all that uh, tedious cut, copy and paste work. Well, this sounds like drinking the Google Kool-Aid, using their services to track performance in their products and recording it in their services. Well, yeah, it's just a really great way to do it right now. Here are, the, here are some of the metrics you can record. Of course, your Facebook likes and shares, Twitter followers and counts, Google Plus Ones, YouTube subscribers, etc. Also, the videos I'll be doing today is search rank positions. You also grab page rank for as long as it's of any value. You can grab data points off the page. Guess what keywords the page is targeting. Do site audits. And what functions are available? What kind of data can you scrape? Well, look at the scrapers tab. A lot of power in there. You make your own. But what about running a job over and over? What about turning an investigation, a quick spot check, into a scheduled job? Replace the question mark with an asterisk. Add a couple of columns, date timestamp, and count. Invite in a particular Gmail and it's processing. That's it. How much does a bag of tricks like this cost? Surely this must be a premium expensive service. No, it's part of the free and open source software movement. But <clears throat> you may have to pay with a little bit of your brain because it gets so much better if you learn a little Python. So who does this 
appeal to? Well, social media marketers and SEOs who are avoiding paying for keyword position tracking software and other things. It could also appeal to people who are trying to learn to program or become a little more technical. <clears throat> and very related to that, but distinct, is people who are exploring the Internet of Things, consisting of tiny, cheap hardware, uh, among other things, but that's the new variable. You can have your code run in some interesting places. Why would you run your own server? Well, I'm not going to pay for your code to run and to host your data. It's better to distribute all this activity all around the world instead of it coming from a small set of servers. And it'll be distributed because it's running out of your home because hardware is so cheap and easy to set up. Having your own server is so much easier than you might think. And you might learn something. Cloud providers don't exactly want you to know things are this easy. And once you learn to set up your own hardware, it's like really easy to manage that kind of stuff in the future. And it costs nothing to start out because Levinix as a way of getting your complete Pipulate server running on your desktop is uh, free and super quick, 20 megabyte download. You can go a slightly longer route and build your own server with higher performance optimized for your hardware using VirtualBox, VMware Fusion, or one of the many virtual machines on your desktop. If you want virtual machines in the cloud, you use Amazon, Elastic Computing, Elastic Computing Cloud, Rackspace, uh, Heroku, uh, Microsoft Azure, there's just so many. And whenever you want to drop $35, you can have your own piece of hardware to run it on the back of your Wi-Fi router at home. <clears throat> For a little more money, you can get very slick boxes, much a little bit more powerful. And in the end, all this portability of your code anywhere, running anything that's, you know, everything's interchangeable, you know, it's because uh, we're using as generic of tools as possible in what we would call our developer and code execution stacks, a very small stack, pretty good bag of tricks. Uh, the only vendor dependent thing here is using Google uh, spreadsheets and using the GData API to reach it. But as soon as those capabilities go into the open source world, we'll swap it out. Beware of the wrong abstractions. It's easy for platform as a service people to wrap you in to their platform and make take your portability away. Just beware of that stuff. Google App Engine and Heroku are the biggest things, although you can use them as you know, infrastructure, as a service. You just got to know what you're doing. Don't get trapped. <clears throat> yeah, it's not for everyone. Um, if you got this far, something's ringing true with you. If you got this far and you're really angry, then just go somewhere else. Not for everyone. But others will kind of see what I'm getting at. We're entering a new era of SEO. Those old spam cannons that did SEO by more and more pages that cast larger and more tightly knit nets of niche pages with specific keyword targets per page, bye-bye. Those pages don't perform well anymore in Google, and Google kind of leads the charge here. But on the other hand, it's a perfect storm for tech-enabled earned media, that is, doing things really cool and really well. Because everyone needs to do things really cool and really well, they need to have both a landing page URL, web address, call it what you will, that doesn't change over time, that can be the recipient of a lot of promotions, that has a cumulative effect. So you need a good target and you need the ability to send messages out onto the communication network, leading people back to this target. That is the odd profession of SEO. We pack those payloads. We make things worthy of being shared and tell you if they're not. And we like to practice what we preach. Some people do whiteboard Fridays. That's great. Love them. Uh, other people write white papers or make tools like browser extensions. All great stuff. I think my contribution is ready. It's called Pipulate. I'm really just connecting a few dots. 
Those dots are individual solutions I have had to figure out for myself. Some of them are widely loved, others are a little controversial. I'm right in the middle of that Vim versus Sublime debate, for example, but here they are. HTML, CSS5, uh, cloud providers and services, Git, uh, Google Spreadsheets API, uh, Python, Vim, uh, your own hardware, Linux. Trying to wrap it all in kind of a 20 megabyte download called Linux that can be with you for the rest of your life where you put together these different pieces. It's a lot like an Infotech lightsaber that can be with you on a long journey. The tools, the heritage or the legacy of the tools does go back 40 years. It's very likely to last another 40. This is very much the code uh, core that you can always be sure will run. This demo kind of got weird, right? Started out with an, a tool to run uh, key performance indicators or to capture your KPIs. Now we're talking about keeping code running for a long time into the future and having a set of capabilities that can kind of achieve Jedi mastery. Well, what I'm really talking about is that fourth R. Reading, writing, and whatever you want to call it. Programming, we'd also accept reasoning. But uh, yeah, uh, the key to this is making it generic because specific technology is vendor or timely or it goes bad. We're trying to zero in on the more generic stuff and to create an execution framework that you can use every day. Spreadsheets, where you can write a hello world program and have it fit right into uh, your daily workflow code that you wrote. And it can be for just little quick lookups. Not everything has to be a big job that you're scheduling and running over and over. Sometimes you want to just write a some quick code and then use it every day. Have it as a, a, a tool in your toolbox. Because not every job is, is scheduled, but if you want it to be, you just replace the question mark with an asterisk, it's scheduled. Because it's all about that spreadsheet, con that spreadsheet context. Uh, that's where people live every day. It's where people want to see their data. It's where they share the data more and more. And why would you work any other way? This looks right because it is right. And there's a lot of other ground we're going to touch if this really is the fourth R of education. And it's so many diverse things, each of which with a kind of requirement of being timeless and uh, uh, highly relevant against a large problem set. And that is core technology and core reasoning, how to use that technology well. But let's bring it back to SEO for a moment. If you're picturing this, you're pretty much right. You got investigations to do, you do them, bam. You modify them a little bit, there's always something there that's copy and paste close to what you need. So you're starting with Hello World in a spreadsheet, and then you're moving on to running little servers on your desktop that are quick to download and do some neat stuff. Oh, and then the third step, get your own hardware and have your code running 24 seven doing your bidding on your behalf. But if you have designs that call for thousands of these things, go to step four and scale enterprise size. Build your own Googles and Facebooks. Probably doable along this education path. Doable with the fewest vendor dependencies and the most freedom. So do me a favor, will ya? If you think this Pipulate project is worth talking about and sharing, then share it. Facebook, Google+, Twitter, whatever. Because I'm connecting some unusual dots and it requires a new way of looking at things. And you have to sometimes turn things different ways to see how they can be used to collect data into spreadsheets magically. Let the alpha begin. Just go to pipulate.com, grab that bookmarklet, let people know, and start talking with me because it's all about the, I call it alpha, but your beta testers. I need my people now. I need the people using this for 
By the end of today, search engine position tracking free because you'll be running few enough that you'll be flying way low under the radar and still get out of it 80% of what you need with 20% of the cost and effort. Thanks for joining me. Hope to talk to you soon and don't forget to subscribe.